Hey, hey, I'm Keith and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you several joinery methods for how to build cabinet drawers. Rabbits, locking rabbits, dovetails, and of course, pocket holes. I'm also going to show you how to level up your cabinet drawers with details like brass bars, brass pins, dowels, and through dominoes. So let's get cracking. And I mean that literally. You'll see. A happy, happy boy. I'm just a big old one, a happy, what? We're rolling, hey, hey, okay. So I have all my drawer parts milled up. I'm not going to go over that whole process because we got a lot to get to today, but everything is milled to exactly five eighths of an inch. I like five eighths for cabinet drawers because it's a little beefier. Half inch to me looks a wee bit chintzy. So I go with five eighths. Now you can see I have five stacks of parts here. I only need three drawers, so I have enough for an extra, and I also have a stack of setup pieces. Now the extras, because I will probably screw something up along the way, so you gotta have that just in case, or in case you screw up one part, you have an extra. Now I didn't cut any of these to length yet, because each joinery method requires a little bit of tweaking on the length. But one thing that doesn't change is I will be using bloom undermount slides for these. Now these slides require that the bottom of the drawer be one half of an inch up from the bottom of the drawer. Now for the bottoms, a lot of people just use quarter inch and call it a day. To me, that is also a wee bit chintzy. There's some flex in there, I just don't like it. I prefer half inch. However, I had some what they call quarter inch plywood here, which is really about less than 3 16ths, maybe 3 16ths. And I took two pieces and I glued them back to back using contact cement and that gave me 3 eighths of an inch. So that's still a nice rigid bottom. So the first thing we can do is cut the groove on all these parts for the bottom and then we can start assessing our lengths for each joinery method. Where am I going? I need this stuff. I load up a quarter inch dado stack and I'm ready to roll. Now what I like to do is go in about a quarter of an inch into the drawer side. Quarter inch. And then since we're half inch up from the bottom, I'll move my fence over, so we're half inch up. All right, so let's just double check that we are half inch from the bottom. Setup block says good. Now since our bottom is 3 eighths of an inch, we just made a quarter inch dado in this. So what we're gonna have to do is make one pass on all of them, move the fence over, and dial in the exact fit of the bottom for 3 eighths of an inch. Now I'll discuss this in a minute, but if you don't have a dado stack, you can absolutely use a single blade and just make several passes to give you the width groove that you need. And that's the fit we're looking for. Okay, while I have the dado stack set up, I'm gonna to move to the two joints that require the dado stack, which is a rabbit and a locking rabbit. Now, if you do not have a dado blade or a dado stack, fear not, you can absolutely use a single blade for all of this. However, if you have an alternating tooth bevel blade, it's going to leave score marks like this, which isn't a big deal when you're cutting a drawer bottom because you won't see it, but if you're looking down at the top of a drawer into a rabbit, you're gonna see all those score lines. So what you really want is a flat bottom blade to give you a flat bottom, or you cut that rabbit just a little bit shallow and you clean it all up with a rabbiting block plane or a router plane. The other option is to do it on a router table with a router bit. Now the reason I don't generally use the router bit for joinery like this is on a table saw blade, you have 40 teeth spinning doing all the cutting. On a router table, you have two, maybe three. So it's a lot of abuse on that router bit. To me, this is just the fastest and most accurate way to get these joints done, even if you only have one blade and not a dado stack. So for the first rabbit joint, I'm gonna show you here, that rabbit will get cut in the sides of the drawer. The drawer front and the drawer back get nothing. They're just square. So it's a relatively easy joint. All right, so I just did all my calculations for each joint. So on the lock rabbit, the sides need to be 18. On the rabbit, needs to be 18. Pocket holes, exposed dominoes. I'm gonna head right here to the miter saw and cut all those two lengths at the same time. All right, you get the idea. Let's move on.
Okay, the rabbit. Now this is done by rabbiting out the sides to accept the front and the back will be joined the same way. Now the reason you rabbit out the sides is because let's just say it was done this way and this is the front, you would see end grain from the front side on the side of the drawer. You don't want to see that. But this way, when you have the false front go over it, it hides all of that. Now some people argue since you're always pulling a drawer open and closing it and pulling it, that it will create stress on this joint. It could eventually fail. With glue, I've just never seen it. So I'm perfectly comfortable with this joint. Now the next one we do, a locking rabbit, will appease those rabbit argumentators and really lock that front in so it can never pull apart. But first, table saw. That was loud. Let's zoom in here. Okay, we still have the dado stack set up here. Again, you can use a flat bottom blade or a regular blade and then clean that joint up. But you really want a nice flat rabbit to accept the front and back. So I'm gonna run a test piece, but essentially what we're gonna do is rabbit out that. Now you can use the fence on this. You can line up your fence for your outside cut to establish that, make your pass, and keep moving over until it's done. Now the reason that you can use the fence with the miter gauge here is because this is not a through cut. So it's not trapping an off cut in between the blade and the fence. This is a perfectly safe operation. We want the outside edge of the blade to the fence to be 5 eighths of an inch. Now I've also set this to 5 sixteenths of an inch high, which is half the thickness of our drawer parts. See that blade leaves some scoring marks, but they're so slight that you just don't see them. All right, and here are our parts for the rabbit. So when that's glued together, that'll look nice. Simple, but effective. And the other thing that you can do with this joint to make it really strong is you can pin it with dowels. I wouldn't advise nails here. Those will eventually just loosen, but gluing dowels through, that would be a nice touch if you wanna see an accent like that. So to do that, I'm going to use these Miller dowels. I'm not sure who makes them, maybe Miller. Comes with a stepped drill bit that you can see that lines up with the steps on the dowel itself. Now something like this, this is actually the mini. They make ones that are bigger. I'm only gonna go in to this point here, which is just under a quarter inch diameter. I'm gonna drive it a little deep and then I'm gonna plug it with a brass pin just to add a nice little accent of brass with the walnut. So with my hole locations marked, I'm actually going to use these squares to get everything in alignment in order to drill these holes. That drill bit can get a little bit wonky on you and you don't want to split out the side. I'm also going to mask off the drill bit so I don't go too deep. So I want to be just below that step. Just make that a little flag so I know when it starts spraying chips that I've reached the right depth. All right, next up is the locking rabbit, where the front locks into the sides. So this alleviates the problem I mentioned before with just the regular rabbit, that the continuous opening and pulling of this drawer, it will never come apart. So with our dado stack still set up on the table saw, let's give it a go. Okay, so I laid out all my joints just so I can see what material needs to be removed and I don't get confused, because that does happen quite frequently and I'll show you the setup. So the outer edge of the blade is 5 sixteenths of an inch from the fence. So we can make that cut, and this is also at the correct height already at 5 sixteenths of an inch, which is half the thickness of the stock. So we'll create the rabbit first.
and I just use my 5 16 setup block to double check that. That's good. Flush. So now I'm going to cut all my rabbits and then I can cut my grooves. Okay, now we need to move the fence over. So now I'm going to move the fence over and keep creeping up on this layout line until we get a nice tight fit with the tongue and the rabbit we already cut. Still needs a little bit more. Ooh, there we go. There we go. And there you go. So there's a fine line between too tight and too loose, but I'm happy with that. That'll be okay. So the other two fit a little bit tighter and what that shows you is how important it is to have equal pressure, equal downward pressure on the table saw when you're using a dado stack or even a regular blade for something like this. Because as that blade is spinning it wants to lift the stock up so if you're not pushing down it could come up just a little bit, it'll leave you with a groove that isn't consistent. All right, to cut the dovetails, I will be using the Porter Cable 4212 dovetail jig. You can see how long I've had this, 2006. Now this side tells you how to do through dovetails. We are going to be doing half blinds, which are over here. And just like everyone else who owns this jig, I use it so infrequently, I have to check the instructions every time. You can see it tells you what bit and what template you need to use. And when you're mounting the boards, they're both cut at the same time. And the important thing is the outside surfaces of the boards face the base. And you can see I've actually written here on my jig, this is the drawer front, this is the drawer sides, and the outside goes face down, so I don't forget. That comes up. Tighten that down. I'm gonna tighten this down. So the other thing we need to do is adjust the depth of our bit. So you can see we have a guide bushing on here and right here, this little black knob, that's the correct depth our bit needs to be at. So I can just drop this bushing in that notch, drop that bit down till it touches it. And I'm gonna lock my depth right there. All right, so what I did was I registered my tailboard centered in between these templates, locked down this plate, and then brought in my pin board, tightened everything down, and now we'll do a trial run. Now these are done with a climb cut to avoid tear out. So you move from right to left. So let's see how well this fits. See the key is you want that tail, you want to try to get that groove centered right on that tail. So when you put that together, it's hidden. That's what we want. So let's see how well this fits together. That will work. And this is where it can get confusing, so I'm going to label them all so I know which parts need to be milled with which parts. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, side, side, back, front. That way I know, back and front go up here, sides go here. Just as a point of reference, once I had the jig dialed in on my test piece, it took 15 to 20 minutes to cut the joinery for one drawer. For me, that's way quicker than hand cutting them, but it's also a different look. And I'm not gonna hammer this thing all the way home until the final glue up.
Okay, the next joint is the exposed domino. And no, not the game piece domino, the Festool domino. This is a easy construction of the door itself. It's just a butt joint. However, on the side here, if you were to look at the side, you have exposed dominoes, which are these. So it just gives a nice decorative touch and you can use contrasting wood if you'd like. But in order to create these, we have to make them because the actual dominoes that you get from Festool, you can see they have these little, these little wings on the side and when you take those off it wouldn't fit perfectly in the hole that the domino leaves so i'm using an eight millimeter domino so when we throw the calipers on here yeah it's eight so i need to mill some stock down to that thickness and then rip it to the correct width and then on the router table i have an eighth inch round over bit which will create the profile on all four sides and give us the domino to fit in the slot that's created Okay, now that I have my stock milled to the correct thickness, I need to check the width of this slot that's left by the domino. Great, 21.45 millimeters. Yeah, metric is so much easier. <laughs> 27, 30 seconds. See, now that is a measurement I can relate to. Okay, so at the router table, I have a 1 8 of an inch round over bit. This is part number 2005C by Whiteside. You can also try this beading bit by Whiteside, which will cut the profile on the top and bottom at the same time and save you a pass. The exposed dominoes will go through here. I'll do three, one, two, three. And that will really tie this drawer together and it'll never come apart. Okay, so I've done my layout lines on both faces. And as you can see, I actually kind of drew on where my mortises are gonna go. So I don't put them in the wrong location. Now I really only need my center line here because the outer two are gonna be registered off these little registration pitons on the domino. Okay, I have my first piece set up in the vise. I put a sacrificial piece on the back. That way when I go through, I don't get a bunch of tear out through the back. And since this material is 5 ace, which is essentially 16 millimeter, I've set the domino to 16 millimeter, which will center the bit on that width. And I've set my depth to 20, so that's just enough to go through. And then I could deli slice the dominoes into bite-sized pieces. Okay, the other one I wanted to show you was the pocket screw method, which is basic, but it's pretty effective. So I have the Craig K5 jig here. I also have this smaller portable jig that can be used. So the way that this works is I will pocket screw from the front into the side apply glue and drive screws that way. And just like all the other methods, when you put the false front on, it hides everything nicely. So the way this works is it has a drill bit with a collar, adjust the depth for how deep the screw goes in based on the thickness of your material. We have 5 eighths material. So there's actually a little gauge in the casing of this one. So with my edge reference up here, I'm gonna slide my depth collar to 5 eighths and tighten that down. Plug in my hose here. Now this also adjusts up and down based on your material thickness. So half inch, five eighths, and if you pull it up, it's for thicker material. So I'm gonna adjust this to five eighths. It'll lock in, and then we can clamp our material down. And walnut is a hardwood, but it's kind of soft. So I'm gonna go with the coarse thread option. They also have a fine thread for hardwoods like maple and oak, hickory. Now they do make specific corner clamps to clamp this together while you're screwing it. I don't have any, so all I'm gonna use is just a regular clamp. But clamping and alignment is very important with pocket screws, because as you drive this screw in, it wants to move this piece and it won't stay. So you really need to clamp it tight and get it in the position you want it. 
before you drive those screws home. So the pan head on these screws keeps them from driving too far in. And just to show you, I mean, all the drawers in my shop were built with pocket screws. You can't see them, but on the front, all joined with pocket screws, and then the false front to cover them all. Yeah. Okay, now the parts for the domino version are done. The dovetail version, the pinned rabbit, and the locking rabbit. Now there's one thing left to do before we can glue all these up. Now as I mentioned before, I'm going to be using bloom undermount slides, which require this notch cut out for the slide to go under. Now all this material here, you don't need it. So what we can do is on the back of every drawer, go to the table saw and rip it right here. What that will allow us to do is slide the bottom in after everything has been glued up and then I can just pin it. Okay, now I can sand all of my parts before glue up. Now I'm only going to sand the insides because after I glue them up, the outside is going to need sanding anyway, so I'd rather not do it twice. And with that, let's cue the sanding montage. This is almost, almost as fun as it looks. Truth be told, folks, this is the first through domino drawer I have ever built. So, well, I'm just going to let the camera roll here. Get a bigger hammer. Wow, that, that is an abomination. <laughs> well, luckily not all is lost because I have spare parts, so I cut that off, cut a new one. Okay, now I have a new piece. I've painstakingly hand sanded these dominoes so they fit much better. So it shouldn't be a problem with assembly. So that exploding drawer was a great lesson for me as far as you should really glue this drawer box together first, then plunge all your dominoes, and then hammer them home. It's also a much easier assembly. Now, your dominoes still need to be fitted correctly so they don't blow out the side, but lesson still learned. Glue it first. And another tip, do not cut these or sand them flush until the glue is completely dry. Just wanted to show you guys here that because these dominoes were custom and I kind of had to finesse them, I got a little gap here. It's a little one back here. So what I'm gonna do for that is I use this uh, tight bond translucent wood glue and then mix it with sawdust. You can use wood filler, you can, whatever you want. I just like this, I like the translucent because it doesn't Mess with the color of the sawdust. You really need to let this dry completely before you sand it. Because right now this PVA glue is introducing moisture, which is raising those wood fibers. So if you sand it now, and then those fibers shrink down, you're going to see a little depression there. So just let it dry and then sand it. Well, folks, looks like I'm learning right along with you today because I totally forgot because I haven't made these in so long that on a dovetail drawer, you really can't rip off the bottom to accept the back because you lose this right here. Whereas if the back were on there all the way, that would be there when this thing is glued together. So now it looks a little janky right there. Once this is all glued in, I will cut this and glue this on right there. But I've seen these things break off anyway because it can be kind of a weak spot right there. Now the other option instead of ripping off that whole slice ahead of time is actually cutting a notch and leaving those two end pieces still intact and then gluing it together. Okay, the locking rabbit.
I always make sure I'm square by double checking my diagonal measurements. And just like the through domino version with this dowel and pin version, it's probably best to glue it up first and then drill for your pins and or dowels. Did you have a good nap? No. All right, after much deliberation, roughly 18 seconds, I've decided that just putting this little bit of the Miller dowel in and then plugging it with the brass isn't, you know, it's really not doing too much. So on the back pins of the drawer, I'm gonna drill those all the way through with the Miller dowel bit and then sink in the actual Miller dowels. On the front, I'm gonna take a quarter inch bit, redrill those holes, and then plug the whole thing with a quarter inch brass rod. Okay. Ah! Ooh, that's hot. So this is just my jigsaw with a metal cutting blade flipped upside down in my vise to cut up these brass pins. And I'm using epoxy here. I don't think wood glue is going to hold up very well with brass. And the same goes for these dowels as with the through dominoes. Make sure that glue is dry before cutting and sanding them flush. Ooh, that's a nice reveal. Now to dress up the locking rabbit drawer box, I'm going to be inlaying some flat brass stock. So I cut some tight fitting grooves on the table saw for the brass to slide into. And because this was a little experimental, on one side I did a quarter inch with an eighth inch next to it, and on the other side I did two quarter inch strips next to each other. So I thought it prudent at this juncture to point out the complications with brass and wood. Number one, the brass is harder than the wood around it. So as you're sanding, the brass does not sand as quickly, so you end up with kind of a little hump, which is okay, but the problem becomes you need to polish and sand the brass to a much higher grit than the wood around it. So I've taped off the edges and I've started going up through the grits, 220, 400, 600, 1200, and then onto steel wool, and then I'll hit it with a brass polishing cloth. But it's a lot of work, and even still, you can see there's scratches in it that all have to, you can either leave them in or try to get them out. Now the other problem with this method is the wood wants to expand and contract this way. The brass is epoxied in, it's not going to move. Now this wood is four to five percent moisture. So it's really not gonna shrink anymore. It may expand a little bit, but you know, it could cause a problem. It could cause a failure. The glue could fail or the side of the drawer could cup because it can't move. Just something to think about when you're doing this type of ornamentation. You have two different substrates that really don't work well together. So it's a risk. Now, since all of our drawers are cut to the exact same size, we can cut our drawer bottoms all to the same size. So. The beauty about this method with the back cut off is I can slide right in here with a ruler and that's showing me 17 and 5 8 strong. And I'll check the width. So I'm probably gonna cut these 18 shy. That gives a little wiggle room left and right to slide it in. And the other thing I do for the edge that's sliding in from the back so I'm going to round this corner off so that doesn't get caught. Man, that grain and those joinery details really came to life when I started applying the finish. Took a piece of scrap from one of my test pieces and cut out a little tooth. Yeah, right. And I'll just glue that on. Don't worry, your mother-in-law will never know.
Okay, folks, it's decision time. We have four drawers here. We have the brass bar version, the brass pins, dovetails, and the through dominoes. Now, we only need three drawers. They will be going in this walnut credenza, which you may have seen in the background. It's gonna be a bank of three. One, two, three in that middle compartment. And there will be a build video of this shortly after this drawer video. So after a good night's sleep and a hot cup of coffee, I have decided to go with these three right here. Dovetails, just classic. The brass pins in this insane crotch grain look amazing. And I love the brass bars. That knot's pretty cool and the grain in this drawer. The through dominoes, eh, it's okay. But I'm really digging these three. So now we just have to put the bottoms in. And yes, I put a little glue in here. There's nothing wrong with doing this with plywood bottoms. If you were doing solid wood bottoms, then you bet your glue booties, you can't glue that. Or you can in one spot, but they need room to move. I just like a little glue, prevents the drawer bottom from rattling. Lola, what are you doing? So these are the Bloom undermount locking devices. Goes one on the left and one on the right. And this is the reason we had to keep the bottom of the drawer a half inch from the bottom of the drawer. So I'm using this little Rockler Jigget guide to drill my pilot holes. So this is the little piton that slides into the hole that we drilled in the back of the drawer. And this is also what gives you adjustment to tilt the drawer forward or backward. And because that is lodged in the drawer, it lifts it up or back down. Now there are a lot of videos out there on installing drawer slides, but for these bloom undermounts, I recommend my buddy Jason Bent over Bent's Woodworking. I'll put a link above, but there we go, installed. All right, so there's a few different ways to dress up your drawers, some easier than others, but the pocket hole method, tried and true. Glue, pocket screws, false front over this. It's tough to beat the speed of this method. But if you're looking for something a little bit different, something when you open that drawer has a visual interest, like the brass bars or the brass pins, hopefully this video gave you a couple of things to try, also a couple of things to avoid. So thanks so much for watching and be sure to check out the next video which will integrate these drawers, well, three of these drawers, into the walnut credenza that I mentioned and show you how taking a little extra time to add those extra details really can bring your furniture up to the next level. So we'll see you next time. What am I gonna do with this?